Hello, in this video I will provide you with my insights on the Gale Force strategy. I will show you later different approach to Gale Force that maybe you haven't seen before. But before we start the showcase, I will obviously give you my perspective on the strength and weakness of Gale Force and provide you with eventually some solution. Before we start, let me illustrate how I get started with Gale Force. When I played with Gale Force one year and a half ago, Something displeased me. I was using it only against weak defense, so I realized my team wasn't good. A good Gale Force team works against good defense as well. Even if you execute properly, you also need the good tools to be able to use it consistently. If you don't use it, or let's say only once every two weeks, which happened to me in the past, most of the time this means you are left with a dead slot in AR offense. And AR offense can be stressful sometimes, especially at the end of the week when you have no ladder or one left. But Gale Force is still interesting to consider. If you are free to play, you surely don't have multiple summoner support. And if your main tank is, uh, let's say, Fjorm, there is a map, for example, against Witch, Fjorm does nothing, you have limited options such as using Fjorm with a second tank, Fjorm tank plus several hit and run units, but Gear Force can be executed without summoner support and that is a strong feature. So having said that, we move to the real topic. What kind of units and skill to use for Gear Force? The general guideline and everyone knows already is having units with different colors, but also units sharing different strength and weakness. For instance, having one unit with lot of speed, another with guaranteed follow-up to break through wary fighter, eventually rest targeting units can be very interesting. Usually bulky units in AR defense have lower resistance. Lilith is a premium option. She has automatic teleportation, freebie slot for launch or lance breaker. Petrine is also another interesting option because she targets resistance. Dragons and mages cannot use Gale Force, and yet I think they can be very useful too for some situation. I will show you why later. And now let's talk about a common problem with Gale Force which is actually being able to kill and activate flashing or having blade. The last one is pretty bad as a skill. If possible, you should rely more on flashing blade because winning the attack is very difficult. Against Duma, Leaf, Bramimon, Edelgard, Chrome or Duo Leaf, notably. And because Duo Peony is everywhere in AR defense, she provides up to plus 10 attack during combat. And this is without accounting for visible buffs. And yet you need attack to kill and activate Heavy Blade. And here's the underlying problem. It is prone to one-shotting units that you shouldn't. One solution is, for instance, to force your green unit to kill a red. And this is sometimes Something I would do, I use Freya to kill enemy Ellie Wood. And this works. But also from my experience, when I fail Gale Force, I remember this is usually because I fail to kill. And this is why I don't mind having a lot of attack. And sometimes I would go with plus attack. And look at this Altina, she is a very interesting case. And this is before I got attack death rain two days ago, but usually my Artina, she fails heavy blade very often. I think it's almost 40% at the times minimum, 40% she fails. And yet my attempts were mostly successful because I would find a way to block one or two units. As long as I kill, I personally find it easier to get a solution. I am not denying the fact that Activating Heavy Blade and Gale Force helps a lot, but I think this is not always required. So the question is, how do you get enough attack to kill without offensive specials and yet activate Gale Force? 
Let me show you this weapon. Ninja weapon. This is very very interesting because it has a low might and gives plus speed. On a dancer like Sylvia with the ideal stat, good HP for reliable infantry pose, very good speed and very low attack. She is very unlikely to kill weak units like Triandra, um, Yun, Dancer, Legendary Azura, or Double Life and Death Lilina, or Double Life and Death Ophelia, or units without blessings, or off season, and there is no need to quad. Remember Flashing Blade activation. Even at plus one speed, you activate Flashing Blade. So this means with Quick and Pulse and Flashing Blade, you get automatic Gear Force. There is no way you will miss Gear Force activations this way. You have such low attack, this is reliable. This is why you. Uh, this is how you get the best of both worlds, I would say. You would get Gear Force strong enough to destroy bulky tanks and another Gear Force weak enough to avoid one shot against weak units, but yet fast enough to activate Gear Force thanks to Heavy uh, Flashing Blade against weak mythics, double life and death mages, or units again without proper blessing. Other version of Ninja weapons are Ninja Yali and Ninja Masakari. The problem with these weapons is that if you want to use them on dancers, you don't have a choice. It's only on Lance Azura and Axe Azura. Both of these are 5 star exclusive, so not, e not easy to merge and they have very low HP. And eventually you have bad IVs and you may want to use a Tread Fruit for plus speed. So again, this is very expensive. But the Ninja Masakari is a weapon that is, I would think, very soon available in a combat manual. And you should consider Anna. She is a rotating bonus. And remember the meme about Anna. Very low attack, good speed. For once, the f for the first time, the low attack value helps a lot. For Ninja Masakari, Flashing Blade 3, or 4 if you want, and Quick and Pulse. She's not a dancer, but the fact you can activate Gear Force means you get an extra action. And so even if she cannot dance, you can use Smite. You can place Anna in such a way you can block a ranged unit and push far away a weak ally. Let's start with the first Gear Force. So this kind doesn't use the wing, uh, Wings of Mercy. It makes use of um, Cavalry Movement from Freya and the Tempest from Dagger. Right. And Change Fate from Chrome, allowing Chrome to get an extra action. Someone like Chrome and Lucina, I say it every time in earlier videos, but these units, Chrome and Lucina, are very very good in AR offense. Not just for Gale Force strategy, but for any kind of hit and run mixture strategy. Hit and run, Gale Force, a mixture of both. Very nice. Right then. Uh, Lily Leaf is not required, but it helps a lot. Yes. So I will wait next turn for the Tempest to activate. So I will activate Gear Force against Chrome. So thanks to the Pathfinder, Chrome can move free space. I will kill Yun with Dagger, but she's not activating Gear Force this time. But thanks to the hit and run movement recoil, Chrome can still move free space. And now Lilith one shot Ellie Wood without casualties. Ellie Wood has very low resistance, so it helps sometimes to target resistance. And this is something interesting here. You see the stats of Lilith and Chrome, very high HP, very high 
resistance, attack, speed. Hell cannot kill Chrome even with a follow up, and this is because I have 4 mythics. Blessing Chrome with 4 mythics means that he is very difficult to kill, so you can use a Gear Force with 4 mythics to make them very, very bulky. If you need to tank two enemies at the end of a turn, you can probably do it thanks to the strong blessings that you get. And this is definitely reliable now because we have six mythics in AR offense. It is possible to use four mythics. So the second Gale Force now is my version of the Air Force. I wanted to work with Kaguro for two reasons. I never liked the boat tower and I never wanted to use it. And Air Force usually rely on the boat tower. And the second reason is because I found it very funny to succeed turn one engagement Gale Force. And this was possible with Kaguro. And in fact, I think now turn one engagement Gale Force is very relevant because now um, we know some people use the seven unit slot mechanism to force the turn one engagement with a healing trap or dancer trap. So a design trap with Kagiro can work turn one. And I have infantry post Sylvia Ninja Masakari to make sure that she gets iceberg ready turn one. And infantry post, of course, for Dagger, because now Dagger has 4 cooldown on Flashing Blade. Yes. So go. I cannot kill Chrome here, but I will still attack Chrome to activate Wings of Mercy. And now you will see. I talked about this before. Sure Why Ninja, ca ninja Massacre... Um, the Ninja Weapons, I mean... The ninja weapons are wonderful. She is not one-shotting Yun, despite Yun having minus 7 defense, debuffs. And she can steal quad, if she cannot kill immediately. Even Triandra, she cannot one-shot Triandra. This is very useful, like I said before. If you are afraid that someone like Dagger or... Freya with one shot Triandra. Sylvia will not one shot them. Say the word. You have my and now Chrome takes care of Eliwood. And Dagger of Hell. So now the next Gale Force is a funny one. I have a complete video on the Pathfinder Gale Force, but I didn't talk about Pathfinder used along with hit and run and a ranged cavalry. But now I'm showing you this in action. It's very interesting how it works. I am using Legendary Leaf here, but it's not required. What you need is a ranged cavalry. It could be a mage. In fact, I think a, a cavalry mage is awesome for this kind of setup. So now I am going to use Chrome to attack the enemy Chrome to activate Wings of Mercy. So now I will attack Yun. I will not activate, obviously, Gale Force, but because of a movement recoil, Friends, Leaf can move free, um, 4 space, and he has multiple targets. And I would say this is a pretty awesome interaction here. And it's only possible with um, Hit and Run, B-slot. And here again, She's not one-shotting Triandra, which is very good. I love to dance. Got it. Forward. So 
So yes, this is definitely a um, very good uh, composition here because uh, some people eventually in AR defense would use range cavalry and if you have a range cavalry with a pathfinder you have the advantage in terms of movement. So now I'm showing you the last this team when I have to use Naga and I would then remove eventually Altina. So let me show you uh, how it works but first let me explain. You don't want a blazing light. No way. It's bad for AR offense, especially with a gear force kind of strategy. What you want is AoE pattern like a square or like legendary Lilina, a plus sign. And for the B slot, you don't want Wings of Mercy, you want the name is Escape Route because you want to smite Ophelia into a boat trap and activate Arden Sacrifice. So this is why you need Escape Route, especially if you don't have Bernadetta. So now I'm going to smite Ophelia to test the trap, which is real. So now I should be ready to make my move next turn. And I have to say it again. Change fate or future vision are really really awesome. Without those kind of skill, uh, this performance cannot be done. If say you want to use smite from Bernadetta or smite from Naga, you will have a problem uh, at the end of a turn. I will show you. Now I use change fate and I still get my extra action, pretty much like a gear force. So now you have Ophelia, she has multiple targets. I will choose Veronica. And Wings of Mercy. The Wings of Mercy allows Chrome to destroy Hollywood. And now I dance and I see if I can kill someone and of course no. So all I can do here is this. With effectiveness and color advantage she one shot Zeros. And now, Regin, Kyo, Pioni, use Kento. And look at this, Smite. This is how Naga can be very useful sometimes. And this shows you the beauty of an assist like Change Fate or Future Vision. Because if I have used Smite from Naga on Ophelia, uh, this performance cannot be done, uh, you know that. And even Naga can be useful sometimes. You see Dual Leaf very often. And she's a dragon, she targets resistance, she kills Leaf easily. So uh, one thing about the AOE Gale Force is that Ophelia is very good because her weapon is very easily triggered. You have Primaria Astra Season and you can use Bernadetta Automatic Activation or you can use Dancer Infantry Pulse and again Light Season you have a Dancer Mage Peony so it's very easy to activate Mistletane. You want of course Double Life and Death. The problem with la Life and Death, especially Double Life and Death, is that the Bright Shrine will attack Ophelia. And this is bad because not only she wants double life and death, she also wants some buffs in attack. I have another option, but it's kind of expensive to set it up properly. Leon, very high attack, very low speed. Imagine double life and death for a Leon with time spells and a specific unit, a dancer with infantry pulse like um, the name was Raphael. Raphael supported, and I supported with Leon. So Leon will get minus two cooldown, 
and then you will have another dancer like Sylvia in Fentry Pose and Times Pose, he gets AOE ready at the start. And he is also a Raven Tome unit, so he can destroy easily uh, far save units like Raphael or Valentine Fave that you see sometimes in AR Defense. Disgusting. So, um, I think I pretty much uh, said everything on this topic. Just uh, one special mention, something that I didn't say before, and this is something I never tried, but it's something very interesting, and maybe you want to see or try it. It's a close call Gale Force, and I think only Marita can use it well, because special acceleration and no follow-up. A very co good combination with close call. Um, you have two links in the description uh, from two different players playing with close call gear force. It's very interesting and inspirational.